So in the last example, we showed that my field, F, which consisted of cosine z, 2y, and minus x sine z, we showed that that was conservative. Because it was conservative, we got that it was a gradient field. Now that we have it as a gradient field, let's go find that potential function. Because it's a gradient field, I know my x component is the partial of my potential with respect to x. And I know that my y component is the partial of my potential with respect to y. And I know that my z component is the partial of my potential with respect to z. Okay, so now I want to go and find this potential, potential function. So then I'm going to look at one of my partials. In particular, I'm going to look at the partial of c with respect to y. What I want to do is I want to integrate that guy with respect to y. That's going to give me my phi of yeah, x, y, z. Okay, so if I go and I do this integration, I see I'm going to find that this is going to be the integral of 2y 2y dy all right so then when i integrate that i'm gonna get um let's see y squared plus a constant now this isn't any old constant this is a constant that may have been a function in terms of the other two variables, x and z. So I'm going to add that, a function g of x, z. Great. Now the reason I want to do this is because we integrated with respect to y. If we took the derivative of this with respect to y, and this function was only in terms of x and z, then it would be eliminated entirely. So good. So now what I have is I have p of x, y, z. That is uh, y squared plus g, x, z. Certainly. What I want to do now is I want to take the derivative of this with respect to one of the other variables. The reason I want to do this is because then I can match it up with my partial derivative of my potential function. So I'm going to take the derivative of this guy, the partial of phi with respect to, now this time I'm going to take it with respect to x because I just integrated with respect to y. So if I do that, I'm going to get the partial of g with respect to x. Great, because the derivative of y squared with respect to x, it's a constant it's gone. So then this function of x and z, this is going to give me the partial of g with respect to x. All right. Um, where are we going from here? Now I want to match that up with the cosine of z because my partial with respect to x is phi. How did I get it from here? That was the integral of my y component. So now I know that this is going to equal cosine z. And then through a similar process, I'm going to go through and I'm going to find g. Here we're going to find g by taking the integral of the partial of g with respect to x, and I'm going to integrate it with respect to x. That's going to be the integral of the cosine of z with respect to x. All right, so then when I integrate this with respect to x, you treat that as a constant. So this is gonna be x cosine z plus some function h of x 
in terms of z, my other variable. See, my g was in x and z. I integrated with respect to x. So if I take the derivative of this with respect to x, okay, if that's a function of z, it's going to be eliminated entirely. So then what was this? This was my g of x, z. Okay. So let me rewrite what my phi is. Now I'm over here. My phi function, what I integrated, it was phi of x, y, z, and that was y squared plus g of x, z from my first integration. Now I want to go through and I found my x, z, so I'm going to put that in there. This is going to be y squared plus x cosine z plus h of z. Okay, that's the piece I just found. Now, this is my phi function, potentially. What did we do? We took the derivative with respect to y, and we integrated that, and we got this original piece. Then we took the derivative of that and patched it up, and then we integrated that with respect to x. So now I want to take the derivative of this guy with respect to z. Okay, so now my partial of phi with respect to z is going to be, oh, that's zero, this one, uh-huh. Derivative cosine is minus sine, minus x sine x, plus the derivative of this function with respect to z is going to be h prime of z, t he. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to match it with my original partial derivative. So then, I'm going to have minus x sine x plus oops, x sine z is the integral of this. My original component was x sine z. All right, now that's going to be equal to this piece down here minus x sine z plus that h of z. So we see when we um, simplify this, we're going to end up with 0 is equal to h prime of z. Now we want to try to find that function of z. So we're going to go and we're going to integrate both sides with respect to z. So then, I'm going to see that my integral of 0 dz is going to be the integral of h prime z. Okay, sure. So we're a little low. I'm going to bring that right up here with respect to z. And that gives me some constants. Awesome. Awesome. So now that we've had all of our pieces. I want to get my final answer. I have it written like this. This last little piece was to find that h. That h was some constant. So now, in orange, my phi of x, y, z, that's going to be y squared plus x cosine of z plus my h of x was a constant. Awesome. And there we found a potential function.